one. Hey guys, and welcome to the Garage Athlete Show. We are on episode 78, and I am joined by the one and only Daniel Frazier. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're a day late, but Dan wanted to get his get his bar so he could talk about it. Yeah. So, yeah. He uh, took full advantage of the um, Black Friday sales, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, I think this one wasn't even on Black Friday. It's just someone's got a load of bars in, I guess, from China and selling them off fairly cheap. Like, I think the closest one I could find to it was like nigh on 300 quid or so. So really, I was pretty happy about it to get, yeah, uh, I was it 87 delivered, I think, off um, oh, nice. the old e-bizzle. Yeah, pretty happy with it. So, uh, I put it together last night. So it's a camber bar. Mm -hmm. uh it's the one where you can it's like a one you press with so it's not like the squat camber bar you put on your back this one you just press with it it's got like angled handles so oh, i um, think i saw it on the garage gym group mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think quite a few people picked it out so i'll let you know again i'm going to test it literally after we finish recording i'm going to go do some rows with it so i'll let you know but yeah the, it's kind of fit the bill for what i wanted like like traditional barbells the, the I would say that, well, they're obviously brilliant and everyone should get to use, learn how to use them, but they're not necessarily the best tool for the job for everything or most things really, actually. But I would say unless you're, I, I, I subscribe into the thing, unless you're a power lifter or you have a strong mind competition where you have to use that specific bar, then you could get a lot of use out of not using a traditional straight bar and going with something else like for example my bar's got a camera in it that curve so it allows for a greater range of motion on rows and uh pressing so when you're in your bent over rows more often than not the barbell just gets in the way of your your gut your chest wherever you're rowing to so with this bar now i can go that just that couple of inches um a little bit further which can you know put the muscle under greater stress give it a bit more damage and might result in some new growth so just having Team bars full range of motion oh yeah that's me i'm like, <laughs> yeah i very much described to was it the um what's his name is retail's sort of way of training and all that i think it, i think it is good for most people it just kind of makes sense like if you're like pausing your reps if you're like going full range of motion if you're choosing exercises which feel the muscle work harder it just you know you don't have to be a genius to make that think that yeah that's going to work isn't it like you know a lot of injuries in the gym sometimes they just happen you know if you go under big massive load with a big stress yeah shit goes wrong but a lot of the time if you're doing like a real hard set but with like trying to keep the most perfect form you can for a full range of motion and maybe stopping one rep from failure you're in a you're doing basically ticking all the boxes to keep yourself healthy like yeah and you got to think like if you're yes it's nice to say i've benched this for whatever or you know you know i could do a set of 10 on flat dumbbell press with 50s or something yeah that sounds cool but you'd probably get more out of well you definitely get more out of say if you went down to mate you don't need a lot of weight like 35 seven kilos but pausing every single rep getting his biggest stress chest right up the whole time you'll probably get more gains from doing the lighter weight the way i wouldn't say you're meant to or, or the way which is more advantageous for muscle growth is to do it that way and you get to use less weight and you you're working just as hard so it's kind of like well it's a no-brainer in my eyes that everyone should be well, striving for that there's been a lot of research recently hasn't there that basically failure is failure yeah. like it doesn't matter whether you fail on six reps or whether you fail on 30 reps i think it's above 30 it then it, it's too it, it's essentially too much volume essentially but if you fail anywhere from six to 30 it pretty much has the same effect in terms of the cascade for uh, hypertrophy. Like your body can't tell that you're failing. The difference between failing at six and the, the difference between failing at 20, the only difference it can tell is the maximal load. But if you're taking the muscle to absolute muscle failure, it, it's still failing. It's still recruiting the maximum amount of motor units that are being used there. So it's one of those things that I think a lot of people get stuck in that like eight to 12 rep range and they don't ever stray away from that. They don't ever load up a little bit more and go maybe six to 10 and they don't ever uh, do some like 15 to 20 like rep work. Like I know for me, when I first started with Jake, all my rep ranges, I've been working in mostly I've been working mostly on like the JP model where it was like six to 10 and then a back off set of like eight yeah. to 12, all my sets went to 12 to 20. Like my, 
dumbbell chest press went from dumbbell chest pressing 35 37 40 kilos to doing like 17.5s for a set of 20 because he wanted rep number one and rep number 20 to look the exact same but doing that for like nine months i was then doing sets of 20 with 40 kilos when i could barely get like eight of them like six months before so just by switching things up in terms of like rep ranges and loads and just I hate the word like confusing the body, but giving a completely novel stimulus. If you're used to training super heavy, you can go to doing higher rep range work. That's probably going to be completely different to how you've trained up to now, which gives your body a new reason to adapt. If you've trained in those kind of like higher rep ranges for a long period of time, maybe try doing some lower rep range stuff. It's there's more than one way to skin a cat. And unfortunately, the human body adapts very quickly. Mm. So it's about finding that right balance between progressively overloading and maximizing the results you see from a particular way of training, but also red recognizing that every so often you're probably going to have to mix it up a little bit. Yeah, not drastically so, but yeah, a little bit of change. Like I like to kind of keep things as boring as possible in my training. Like I want to run, you know, so I'm doing an inclined dumbbell press at the moment. I'll try and run that for as long as possible. Like from, yeah. for like probably like two, three months, maybe even more, like just running the same exercise, but looking to increase it. Like you don't have to go crazy in your training. Well, yeah, obviously you're working hard, but I mean, if you're doing like, say, you start off with four sets of tens with, I don't know, 20 kilos on an inclined dumbbell press. And then if your girl's muscle, muscle growth, and then you find on your first set, you're now in the second session, you're able to push that to 12 and then you get 11, 10, 10. Next session, you're able to go 14 and then all the rest of the sets are 11. Then the next session, you can even get one more rep, I'll get 15, then bring the rest of the sets up. The next session, you find, okay, 15 is the most here, but then the rest of the session, um, the rest of the reps are starting to creep up towards that 15. And then, you know, you're still making progress. Like weight on the bar is not the only way to progress. So, you know, if you'll find you're getting just a, like even just like a couple of extra reps each session you're giving yourself a, a good stimulus to grow from so just People looking to, volume isn't it yeah exactly like a big thing you know for your smallest like fucking like dumbbell dumbbell was it what do you call them? lateral dumbbell raises um for your delts like i'm doing um doing those quite frequently at least every week now but god they're painful as hell but then when you're pushing those like sets of 15 it's really tough so stuff yeah. like my like well, what i do with a lot of people is like start for the weight you can do comfortably three sets of 10 then next week go three sets of 11 then maybe your first set's 13 then it's 11 11 then go up to a, to a point where you can do all three sets for 15 reps then increase the weight because like to go up like two and a half k on like a lat race it's like it's quite a big jump and it adds up very yeah. quickly so you need to sort of just find slow little ways to, to push it but yeah they're, they're so like it's just painful I and mean, it's quite fun but like it's like my sessions are like completely different so instead of doing like bench press and then my accessories afterwards or whatever I'd be like, okay, well, shoulders are the priority here. So say I do a military press. Instead of going military press into, you know, say an inclined dumbbell press, I'll go military press. And then the second exercise is an isolation movement for the, the what do you call it, the medial delts. So um, oh, the, your lateral delts, no, lateral delts. Come on, help me out here, Dom. Me, uh, well, medial delts. Is, yeah, medial yeah, delts. So I'll go straight into that, whereas normally I put my isolation at the end. But then I'm like, hang on a second. And my main priority here for this session is it's shoulders focused. So would it make more sense for me to do my midi? Because, you know, working midi dots isn't going to necessarily impact your dumbbell pressing that much. But at the same time, you can really attack it because it's only this, the second exercise in your session. So it's just that exercise order as well. You, you really shift things around. It creates a whole new challenge. And it's, it's, it's been quite exciting, actually. So it's, it's been yeah, nice. But, um, I, this new, I just remember that new bar I've bought should come in. Sorry, you're carrying on. I just remember going into the gym, like, the first proper gym that I joined and like picking up the tens to do that to raise of them just didn't move picked up a 7.5s wouldn't move I was like what the hell what's going on here I ended up doing lateral raises like 2.5 kilos just because as you said like the only movement that the middle or heads of the deltoids do is that is that raising of your shoulder like that? Like we we don't do that in everyday life. However it's made a big difference to kind of like I know my physique doing a lot more lateral raises and cuff raises and all that kind of stuff to kind of like you want to create that, that v way. that v taper look you have to have well-developed shoulders you have to mm -hmm. like if you want to look big you need a yoke you need big shoulders you need uh big traps you need a big neck so to get that it's from 
you're going to have to do some isolation work. There's nowhere around it. I mean, some guys genetically just have freakishly big um, delts. If you're on steroids, they're going to grow anyway because they respond really well to um, gear. But then if you're natty, you're really going to have to work that medial delt. Whereas I have noticed when I've not included them in my programming, when I've lost a lot of weight, um, you really start to see it. You're like, fuck, I look narrow because I haven't done that work in to get the shoulders out. So yeah, you have to smash them at least once, at least once a week, but maybe probably a couple of times a week, you really have to work them hard. So if you want to give yourself that V taper, like you have to work the, the medial dots. It's just obvious, you know, it's that muscle on the side which sticks out. Yeah, I think we're, uh, in terms of my training, we're starting reversing, reversing out of this dieting phase now. So mm-hmm. my top off season weight this year got to like 84 kilos which my stage weight is like 68 Mm -hmm. so what would that be 15 16 kilos above stage weight Mm -hmm. so essentially what we're doing now is we did a mini cut i pulled down to like 75 76 kilos now and then we'll slowly start bringing like food up so food is high but weight hasn't caught up back caught back up with it So we're probably at the then, what, 77, 78 kilos when I start prep in the spring, just because I did not, I really, really did not want to be dieting for 37 weeks again next year. That was brutal. Like, I'm looking back on it now, I don't know how I did it. But it's one of those where it was slow. Pretty much the entire prep, I lost like a pound a week for 37 weeks like almost bang on like sometimes it was more sometimes it was less but on average it was a pound a week for like 37 weeks so yeah we've got all that to look forward to next year yeah good luck with that one so uh, yeah. it is quite tough i'm kind of like cruising at the moment like okay i keep wanting to lose weight but then i'm like i'm not really if i was i'd be, <laughs> try, I'd be trying harder if i was i mean i'm keeping a check i managed to keep on keeping under 110k like, i think i range from 107 to 109 which is fairly light for me so i'm all right with that and i think next year I'll, I'll push that a little bit harder and i think well if your activity level's gone up quite a bit with all the drumming uh I don't know. Like, I guess it's weekly and you cut a lot of stuff around and, you, you know, you're, you're pretty active when you play. Like, you, you know, I sweat like buckets when I'm playing. But I, I, I don't know. You kind of, I guess you have a couple of pints while you're there. So probably <laughs> it <evens> balances out. <laughs> out. Yeah. But I mean, I've always been, I prefer to lose body fat through diet than cardio personally, in my personal situation at the moment. I mean, there are, you know, ridiculous amounts of benefits for cardio. But I mean, it, it I find... I stick better to producing food slightly than exercising more. Cause I find when I exercise more, I don't, I don't know why the mindset is I just feel like I can eat more. It's not right. But this is always a problem I had when I'd run, used to run like group training and, and stuff. You give people hit sessions where you'd absolutely destroy them. And if anything, people gain weight cause they just keep eating more. They just feel like, Oh, yeah. I work really hard. And you know, it, it is a thing once you've worked really hard, you've gone for a long run, you've worked, you know, you've had a big day of, of um, I don't know, activity. You want to eat. You just, you do, you just, it's a very simple, it's like, um, you just, I don't know if you just feel your body's like, right, fit, like fuel me back up. And it, so I found my best success I've ever had with dieting is personally very little cardio, if any, and just lifting, but then bringing it right down through diet. So I would, I would go through, I prefer to cut it through, through dieting, but it is I good to be active. With hit as well. The problem is that when you absolutely destroy somebody with hit, they then have no energy to then move around for the rest of the day. So their knee comes down to accommodate it. So whereas if somebody just kind of like went in the gym, did a decent kind of like weight session or just went and spent like 20 minutes, 30 minutes on the bike, Mm -hmm. they, they still have energy left over for the rest of the day so that they won't just go and like, just sit on the sofa for the rest of the day and eat pizza. Whereas like when you absolutely kill somebody with a hit, like their central nervous system is so fried that they just, they don't want to do anything. They don't want to move. They're just knackered. And then they, as you said, they're like, oh, I just absolutely slayed a workout. So I deserve mm. a reward for that. And then they tend to reward themselves with like calorie dense food because that's what they're, as you said, their body's craving it because it's just had this big shock to the system, which would normally mean kind of like you were in danger. So you need to eat something to give you the energy to be able to kind of like get away from that. So I was very much a, 
I was looking back on my, on my Google Drive, like some of like the articles I wrote when I was like, what would have been 21, 22, first past university. And it was like, hit is like amazing. Carbs are the enemy. Like I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I bought into all this bullshit. And it's, it's amazing how your, your views on like different things within the industry can change over time. And also how these things kind of keep coming back. Cause like in back in 2012, it was oh, I'm trying to think of it was it was the low carb diets that were like the thing at that point. And then we went through a load of different versions of it. And it, it seems to be kind of coming back around now. I've seen I've been speaking to a lot of people when I've said, well, what have you tried before? And they were going to oh, I mean, I've been doing like keto or I've been trying a, a low carb approach. And it's like, well, how do you think you're going to be able to keep that up for a long period of time? No, like when I do it, I lose like 12 pounds and like four weeks but then I just can't keep to it and so all the weight kind of comes back on so mm. it, it's definitely one of those things where these that like diet culture has hasn't changed um I think there's definitely better quality information going out there nowadays there's more like of your normal level like personal trainers that genuinely want to help their clients like giving out good information of essentially just stick to a calorie deficit like enjoy your food like you can eat whatever you want you just can't eat all of it and i'm I'm just hoping more of that is, is penetrating into the marketplace and more people are becoming aware of it rather than these quick fix kind of like diets where it's that that yo-yoing back and forth like what do you find with your clients is like the biggest biggest problem in terms of like diet side of stuff just fucking love it again <laughs> uh it's the same shit everyone goes through just things are delicious times of year social situations family situations yeah it's uh it's, it's a bit of a minefield i think it's just trying to find the right tactics for the right person like, i think fasting can be a really good tool for a lot of people like not for the I don't believe the claims it makes about, you know, they're pretty out there, some of the claims. But I just think in terms of organizing a calorie deficit, it's like, it's pretty fucking good. Like, just don't eat at certain times. And when, you know, let's say, you know, you're trying to, you're stepping on stage, you want everything advantage you can get. So, you know, you want to be on your protein goal, you know, give or take by one gram, you know, for people trying to like feel better about themselves naked and look good in the the mirror, then doesn't really matter if you're like 40 to 50 grams of protein hell you don't even need, need as much protein as you think like you can just bring it right down so it's kind of just finding the right tools for the right people like fasting for somebody was awful like the worst thing they can do they just hate it and other people they're like this is so liberating like by taking <laughs> that choice away it's like well i don't eat till i'm you know till it's like midday ish and then when i do eat i'll make some delicious and then that will fill me up whereas other people are just like this is hell i can't do it so it's kind of like you know it's just yeah like you say finding the right tools for the right person so yeah not my but the thing is like a lot of my clients are, aren't drinkers so it's not necessarily alcohol calories that shoot them over it's just things tasting nice like before you like you realize like, i'm just looking at some things we bought the other day right so these i don't know if you've ever tried them you probably you probably don't want to try them. maybe when you come out of your diet so they're called well, they call, what, what's that one there it's from aldi it's called the chocolate and orange brownie bombs and they also do a regular one as well hey okay. i'm not kidding this is like one of the fucking best things i've ever had in my mouth Whee! like it's fucking <laughs> sensational but like you can smash through like six or seven of them like no problem and then before you think about it, that's like a thousand calories just gone like yeah. straight away like the biggest tip i can give people who want to lose weight i suppose is don't eat past 6 or 7 p.m. Just don't do it. And then you'd be like, what? What if I, yeah. I mean, okay, yeah, if you get back to the gym and you haven't eaten all day, you're right, fair enough. But say if you have your dinner at a normal time, like let's say 6 or something like that, after your dinner, don't have anything. I like, literally do not eat one single thing. And you'll be amazed at how many people just have these empty calories because we all do it. You're like, oh, we'll put a TV on, we'll sit down. Oh, should we have something sweet? Yeah, go on, let's have a, a cup of tea and a biscuit. And before you know it, it's like, fucking hell, I've had a biscuit, I've had a... I've had uh, Aldi's, what do they call them? They call them seal bars instead of penguins. 
uh you know packet of chocolate you know i'm just looking at them we've got bubble just looking at the snack cupboard. yeah yeah we've got <laughs> the, the snack, snack cupboard staring you in the well, face our, our, our snack cupboard now has become a clear box at the top uh, i don't know okay. why it's clear it's just the one we've got but we've got because the kids kept breaking into the one the one at the bottom getting them all so now we've got it at the top but then uh, i have to, <laughs> I have to get it, hide it at the top yeah but a sealed top so now when we have it it's like it comes out at night and it's like free game go for it and you're like okay <laughs> oh my god so yeah it's, it's bad but like fuck i can you can easily save yourself like you can put yourself in a deficit straight away by not just mindless what i call it mindless eating you know when yeah. you're not even thinking about it you're just eating and we all do it for comfort reasons for taste reasons because we like to it's just the easiest way is it's not what diet or it's not this it's just if you find yourself mindlessly eating, like eating while you're driving, eating while you're working, um, eating while you're watching TV, that's where you're in the danger zone. That, yeah. Um, that's where like shit hits the fan basically. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those things where if I'm working with like a busy professional and they often like work through their lunches, you'll find that they, they, as you said, mind, uh, mindlessly eating. So they'll end up, they're snacking on the commute, they're eating at their desk while they're working. And essentially their, their brain is not registering that they're eating because they're doing something else. Like one of the simplest things you can do if you're a mindless eater is something simple that like mindful eating, which is take your meal to a completely separate area from wherever it is that you're working and spend just five minutes even five five minutes to start off with just eating but being mindful of the fact that you are eating not doing whatever it is that you're trying to multitask doing like multitasking is a is a myth like the human brain is not capable of doing multiple tasks at the same time what we do is we swap very quickly between tasks and all those little swaps take time for your brain to essentially do so you're better off just fully focusing on one task and doing it from beginning to end and be completely present in that whether that task is eating whether that task is doing something on your laptop whether that task is texting somebody back like if you can go all in on whatever it is that you are doing you'll get it done far faster than when you try and do three or four things at so, once you're speaking so I'm, i've decided i've got adhd i'm self-diagnosed by the way i've, I've just decided okay but like it's it's that kind of focusing on one thing like i i really struggle mate like it, i find it very hard and to the point i'm just like i need to like almost like throw my phone across the room because like it's hard to speak to someone like eye to eye like there it's like it really happens and like you say like we're doing a hundred things at once i mean i guess it's kind of our own fault like do i need to keep checking instagram do i fuck um do i need to look for another bench for my gym no i don't um it's like they say it's whether i mean what's his name is it is it jason Kalipa? i think i've said his name right he's got this thing where it's like am wrap your life like it doesn't matter what you're doing it am wrap it so you know he's obviously made a lot of money from crossfit now with all the gyms he owns and he's competed in the games and he's like look if you're if you're with if you're with your family like am wrap it you know make sure you're you know smashing it if you're you know training in the gym go fucking balls out if you're watching a film sit and watch the film and it's like it's, it's, it's one of those things it's harder to do than you think like it's easy for yeah. us to go like yeah just just do you know going on that was like you know personally i find it really difficult like really really hard to do i think it as you said it's it's one of those things where we live in a distraction-based environment our mm. phones are always on there's always emails uh notifications text messages all these things all these little signals to us to create those little dopamine hits in our head of attention like it's it's that those, those short-term like hits of feeling good somebody wants my attention somebody wants to speak to me somebody's liked my post somebody's engaged with me i am valued as a person because i've put mm. content out there and people are engaging with it and this this is where half the problem kind of comes from is that we we're so used to getting those little dopamine hits throughout the day consistently now that it's very, as you said, very hard to concentrate on something that's going to take you a decent amount of time to be able to complete, to be able to kind of get that dopamine hit at the end when you can literally just look on your phone. Oh my God, somebody's liked my, my Facebook post or whatever it is, or I've just sold something on eBay or I've, I've done all these things where it's those it's that it's that chasing the oh what's it I can't remember the there's a saying it's that chasing that high 
essentially. Mm. Um, and it's the side effect of the social media age that we kind of live in. Like a lot of people that I've spoken to when they've taken breaks from social media, like I keep telling myself that I can't take a break from social media because I need it for business, which I do need it for business. But I know for a fact, if I just shut down my Facebook page and shut down my Instagram page within a couple of weeks, I'd probably be a lot happier because you'd have to find those feelings of self-worth to come from somewhere else, somewhere that's probably going to be a lot healthier. Mm. Yeah, no, that's what you mean there. But um, yeah, fucking social media, man. It's a... Uh... But it's part of our life, isn't it? Speaking of which, are you as shocked as I am to find out that the Liver King has been outed as using <laughs> performance enhancing drugs? I'm surprised it has taken this long, if I'm being honest. Like, I'm mm. not being funny. You don't look like that at in your mid to late 40s eating pure offal without some sort of PEDs like I'm not how how many 40 to 45 year apart from like Michael Tren who is another questionable one on whether he is or isn't on PEDs he's oh, like, just got great genetics yeah 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 oh 100 percent and it and still looks like a Greek god at what he's probably got to be 50 now hasn't he oh mate I don't know he's just <laughs> gear or not like fucking hell what yeah, yeah he's insane he's done it all isn't he he's like he, he's, yeah. he's gone he's transcended you know pt to, to fitness <laughs> phenomenon personality Fit to a fitness god um, but yes um i've not i haven't seen much of the liver king's content i, I think I, i've never about. followed it yeah I, I know he's insanely popular you're, you know like i don't know about you you're in the you're, well i don't know about you like we, we're an industry you know i hate saying that word we've, we've worked in it for fucking years when someone of your like families or someone who's not really into training or fitness talks to you about someone they've seen online then you know they're obviously a big deal because they're yeah. probably not watching you know a strong man I like from Estonia lifting a stone, right? Um, yeah. who's, who's not even competing in worlds. Like, but when they tell you about this thing I've seen on TikTok, then you know it's probably quite a big deal. And then when yeah. you sort of like, you, like I, I don't, I don't know if I purposely stay away from it. I just don't follow it. But then when you see it come up, you're like, oh fucking hell! Like, I guess for like people last week can laugh it off, like, don't fucking eat cows' dicks all day and then <laughs> say it's going to get you jacked. Like, come on, ridiculous. Was well, I guess people are watching it going. Yeah, yeah. Really, I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat some raw liver, and this, yeah, this is what's what gonna make me jacked. Fit. It's like, yeah, dude, like, like, I, I, if, right, even if it did make you jacked and looked like that, fuck, it's not worth it. To <laughs> eat cow's liver to look like, to look like that. I'd rather be a yeah, bit eating around. raw I guess, heart. I guess that's the difference between you and me. It's like maybe I could just like not eat like a fat shit, and you know, eat sensible choices and i'd still look pretty jacked you don't have to do that it's fucking crazy what but then again it makes it's fucking what do we call it it's content it's something like to watch we're like it's have shocking. you seen this guy that's absolutely jacked because he eats cow's hearts and you're like what let's have a look that's that's how it works and it's, see it's shareable isn't it it's viral like if somebody in the first three seconds has just got a raw liver and then bites into it that's going to catch people's attention and then you know what the fuck is wrong with this guy and then they kind of because he's built up a decent following you then get other content creators that are like i want to go and live like the liver king for like a day so like one of the videos that i've 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 watched like three videos on him one of them is this content fitness content influencer or whatever it is and his whole thing is like living like a caveman so like okay. at their yeah. ranch they've got like a something that just cuts all the uh, mobile phone signal so you can't you can't get internet kind of like while you're there. So he's trying to like video call his missus back in California and has to walk like half a mile like off the ranch to be able to get like 4G to be able to like speak to her. And they like do this crazy, this crazy like CrossFit style like workout where they've got this like sled with like 200 kilos on and they've got to like walk like two miles with it or something. And then he feeds them loads of, basically awful and shit and is it's one of those where he knows that that creator's got what, a half a million subscribers mm. all of his 
followers will then watch that and go, oh my God, this guy's crazy. I better follow him and see what other crazy shit he kind of gets up It's to. It's fun. It's a TV show, isn't it? It's entertaining. Yeah. Like you made me think of this loads of these guys that create whole channels based on following people for the day. Who's it? Is it Will Tenement? Is that? He's like a young kid from the States. When I say young, he's probably like 20s. Like, he's in very good shape, but what he does is like, I did, you know, like the but is it the buff dudes as well? I ate carnival for a week. Here's what happens. I cut out yeah. sugar for a week. Here's what happens. I did the Verkle diet for a week. Here's what happens. And it's like that. Like, I, I like watching them, but they're quite entertaining. Like there's yeah. one that got my algorithm of a couple that um, try getting up at five a.m. every day, quit alcohol for a year every day, and it makes it's a show, isn't it? It's you, you watch it and you, you enjoy watching it. Yeah, yeah. But I guess that's how they live. But I mean, is it? I guess we can look at it and know straight away that is it that this guy's on roids. Yeah, he's ridiculous. Take him with a pinch of salt. But is it okay for them to build these audience? Do you think they're deceiving? Do you think it's okay? Do you so, think it's a problem that they've made their living saying they're not on gear when clearly they are? I think the problem is like he went on like Joe Rogan's podcast and basically was like, I'm not on gear. Like full on blatantly like lied on essentially what is one of the biggest platforms in the world hmm. to then have it in writing. Have you seen like the text or the email or whatever it is? Like I've seen a brief email. I think I haven't so, watched yeah, the he video. Basically, on he speaks about like something's not working. Here's my stack. And to be honest, it, in terms of a stack one, it's terrible. Like it's yeah. terribly built. He's got loads of things that almost, they 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 don't work in synergy essentially um and two yeah you can understand the other health issues that he's having because he's got so much there's about eight or nine different um substances within there and it's just like i i get it however i also know that a lot of people that have used gear basically say that unless you're wanting to compete as a professional bodybuilder or make a million dollars from a YouTube channel from it. It's not really worth it from the side effects that kind of like happen. But I don't agree with like steroids or not steroids. It's completely personal choice. If you want to go down that road, be my guest. However, mm. be honest about it because what mm. you're doing is you're setting unrealistic expectations so, so, for uh, people. What would you that... do with that? What would you do with that argument? Let's look at the biggest. I guess, and your with your argument of them all, the fraudsters, then the, you know the guys in films and superhero films, you know they're on mm. tons of shit. Like, what what do we think about that? Again, I I understand why The Rock wouldn't come out and publicly admit it because, unlike the fitness industry, like it's not readily accepted within the general population about the use of performance enhancing drugs. Like we know that like professional sport is rampant with it. Like if you looked at an American football team and tested any of them in the off season, they're probably going to be using PEDs, mm -hmm. but you had asked the average American football fan, whether there is drugs in American football and we'll go, no, they're all tested. If you ask people if there's drugs in the Olympics, most people won't think that there is drugs in those sports. And, and there is, because we wouldn't keep seeing these crazy world records being broken year on year because of the massive amounts of money that is involved with professional sports nowadays. So I think it's it's one of those things where if you can start to speak about these things, if you can bring it to a wider audience and show that these people are doing it as responsibly as possible, because that is the choice of career that they've gone down. Like if you want to be an amazing guitar player, like you've got to make certain life choices about playing the guitar. You're probably going to have to invest a lot of time and effort into perfecting that craft. To be a professional athlete nowadays, doing it naturally, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because basically everybody else is kind of doing it. Does that make, make it right or wrong? Are the my my big problem with drugs in sports is do the governing bodies realize there is this rampant problem there? And are they just sweeping it under the carpet because they know the entertainment value? 
is far more when you've got all these guys that are basically superhuman or do they just not know about it? In which case that's a massive failure on their part. Yeah, I guess it's, it's, it's I don't know. Is it gray or is it black and white? Is it, you should say if you're on it or not. I, I don't know. Like it seems the argument seems to change when there's millions of uh, pounds on the line. Like these guys, you know, Liver King is, and then you talk about, you know, these guys that aren't in the fitness industries, um, that it might be slightly different. But I guess the same thing, like these guys have probably gone above the fitness industry into the entertainment industry with what they do and they offer. So maybe that's why they're not saying they're on gear. Yeah. And, you know, and there's, there's always kind of sometimes a bit of backlash to people that have said they're on gear. Um, everyone still says, oh, you're cheaters, cheaters, cheaters. I'm like, well, all right, fair enough. But you, you take a violent test and let's see if you look like that, right? But, yeah yeah I, I don't know man I, uh, I, I don't know i guess maybe i need to be more like yeah this guy's fucking outright liar like you know this whole fucking pages on your videos on youtube of like are you natty or not and i was like fuck do people watch this shit like they really get into it like look at this and look at that and can you do this like naturally yeah. you should be able to do that and it's like basically it's like it, what, what youtube is now like is like having conversations in high in um, high school or like sixth form with your mates of like oh, i was this guy on this or that and it, but now what they've done is they've just taken that argument to the internet and it's for everyone to see it's just like fuck are people having these conversations i guess of course they are because you know we're humans that's what we do but yeah it was just like i guess for me it's like it's no surprise i'm like move on because i guess people maybe will start getting quite angry about it i mean you know i personally haven't taken any roids but then i was like would, would i tell everyone if i was to go on gear i don't i don't know if i would like i mean if they asked me i'd probably say yeah but i would make a big statement about going on it um if i go on roids i think they also people they get they, they're on it for that long and they've built this whole career up off of it that maybe they're <laughs> scared to say they're on roids and it's like you know and um i guess the way of saying they're not on roids is to say no i'm not on it and it's like but then when you look back on the videos and when they're really staunch saying they're not on it you're like thank you fucking up it's a bit like, <laughs> kind of cringe isn't it and it's 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 easy for people to be like look at this motherfucker and it's like oh God, yeah and they go back over footage from like five ten years and create a compilation of you going definitely not on roids definitely not on roids definitely yeah, not yeah, roids yeah yeah yeah, right? yeah. Course, it makes it, it makes a great watch doesn't it and suddenly that person's gone viral on whatever social media they're on sharing all those videos so yeah it's uh it's it's a big entertainment, isn't it? Like you're just kind of watching it, like you know that Michael Jackson meme with his sitting there with his popcorn. I guess that's what we're all kind of doing with it all. But yeah, I mean, I don't know enough about Roy's. I still don't think it's a good idea for most people to go on it. But no. then I've had some people, you know, go up into seminars where they talk about how great steroids are amazing. They've changed their life. They feel fantastic. You know, they look amazing. Like, what's the problem if someone wants to take a bit of gear and? you know feel good about themselves and i'll be like i don't i don't know you made you've made a kind of argument there but then it was like it's wrong it's like, well, i guess it, it kind of, maybe but like i guess my argument was always if guys are spending guys and girls are spending tons of money on supplements looking for test boosters what's the best stack what's this what's that i'm like probably better off just injecting something or taking something because uh, yeah it will probably get you the results you want without wasting your money obviously it comes with a whole another you know minefield of injectables and is it healthy and that kind of stuff but just yeah i don't know it's just an era i've never really gotten into i know there's some guys who have some amazing detail and insights who are very open about it but it's just it's, uh, yeah it's just not something i've i haven't well, thought of at it, length yeah when it comes to juice i know just enough that if somebody came to me who was natural and then and said that they wanted to go enhanced and be able to point them in the right direction of a good starting point. But I would also say, look, I'm not an expert on this. Here's a couple of coaches that are really, really good that I know will look after your health as the number one priority. And I think that's, that's the difference that's come across from me from the last like few years is a lot of these top, coaches in bodybuilding and stuff they're now having to pay a lot more attention to athletes health because you've got mm. all these top tier bodybuilders that are just dropping dead mm. with heart attacks and mm. all kinds of shit like oh what was his name it was that big um the big he's a big female coach and one of his clients like dropped dead and somebody released her stack and it was like she had like 
ridiculous amounts of diuretics in her system that essentially made her liver shut down or something yeah, I th- like I think that. I might, I think I might know who you mean. Um, I'll message it to you. I don't want to say it just in case I've got yeah. it wrong on that. That's fucking slander, right? But I'll just message <laughs> you who I think it was. Uh, but I don't want to go into because you know that's someone's reputation if it, um, yeah, if if I'm wrong. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's, it's oh, scary. Sorry, but, you know, we're, as well. yeah, we're kind of like we're talking about people that are trying to be that one percent. I, I think some of these people, what, what what you think of it or not, are willing to die for what they want to do. They they are. Yeah. I mean, it might seem to the most people like insane and ridiculous, but I, they're willing to die and. I don't know, are these coaches comfortable with putting them in that position? I I guess they are. It's fucking mental, man. Like, when you consider how niche of a sport bodybuilding is and mm. how, you know, we know, obviously, your Arnolds and your Coleman's and that kind of stuff, but no one really knows most of them. Like, you no. get the diehard fans, but you'll know, like, it's like anything in sport. Like, I don't follow cricket, but I know who Ben Stokes is. Do you know what I mean? Like, you, you have certain things like that, but... They're, they're, they're literally willing to die for this sport or the in this competition it's, it's it's a yeah it's a weird place that kind of i don't know what the word is the one percent that fringe society that one little thing where people are willing to do anything which to someone else would be fucking crazy but to these people yeah. they want to that you know what's his face um apparently i don't know is this true that stack that liver kings was meant to be worth something like fifteen thousand dollars a month or some, something like that. Is, that is that what did i read that right or like one and a half grand a month it might be about fifteen hundred dollars yeah so like so so what like, like, have, yeah i was gonna say i was like that's the same so one and a half one and a half grand a month to like well, here's the thing, mate. If, if like, that, you know, he looks incredible. He's absolutely jacked. But I'm like, even me personally, would I spend one and a half grand a month? I'm like, no, I fucking wouldn't. Like, I just flat out wouldn't. But I guess I mean, it's, it's worth it. Yeah, well, obviously it is because, you know, you can imagine the return he gets on it from his... He'll be a multi, multi, multi-millionaire from all his... Um, oh, he's got a ridiculous media. amount of business. Like, people were saying he's been cancelled. And it's like, know. yeah, he might have lost, like, one or two of his, like, uh, what's it, sponsorships... He's got like 10 or 12 different businesses that he owns, that he owns. It's not just an affiliate marketing thing. It's he physically owns the business. Mm -hmm. Like the YouTube gave him a platform to build these different like pillars. Like if anything, this is probably going to make him more popular because it's going to be making him a more divisive person. So you're going to have half the people like being like, so what? He like he's jacked. I love him, and the other half being like, "You've betrayed us. Like, you you need to go die. Like, sending death threats and stuff." However, people don't realize that the algorithm can't tell the difference. You are giving yeah, him attention. Yeah, this this is it. This is where like it's gonna yes. make him blow up even more. Well, this is what people. I I I purposely don't comment on things that I see when I know it's fucking bullshit and all that. I just can't do it because I'm like I know I'm giving them the traction they want. So I was just like, I won't even, oh, it's like, it annoys me. But like, yeah, it, it's, tra- it's traction they're going to get. I mean, sometimes it can be maybe too much for them and they do probably get cancelled their own way. But at the same time, like people might think, okay, so. So he's there. Like, it'd be interesting some of the fans, like in terms of, because I guess he's got some diehard fans. Will they end up sort of defending him and be like, well, yeah. you know, that's fine. Or do you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to start taking Roy's now. I'll be interested to see yeah, where this true. goes over the next year or so. Well, the the best example of this that I've seen is Will Smith. So Will Smith, Oscar slap. A month later, guess who is New York Times' number one best-selling author? Oh, Will wow. Smith's autobiography. Literally four weeks after it. Because it, it's publicity. His name was... You couldn't go anywhere without hearing about that thing. I went and got his audiobook because of that slap. I went and listened to it. I was like, this guy's clearly got something that fucked him up earlier in life to make him go and do that. I want to. I want to listen to his. I want to listen to his story now. And it, there's no such. It's an old phrase, and there's no such thing as bad publicity. Once you're a celebrity, anyway, like if you, it can be very, very detrimental to a local personal trainer if you if you fuck up one of your clients and word gets around. However. To somebody that's that big, like the fact that your message and your name is just going to circulate the internet, so people are going to start googling you and finding your content. Mm. But every follower Liver King loses, 
he's probably going to gain two from people that had never even knew he existed. But then go and Google, even though like it's coming up that he's on steroids or whatever, and just go and see this crazy jacked guy eating raw liver and goes, I, I don't care he's on steroids. That guy's in- insane. I want to watch more of his content. Yeah, I just I guess we'll find out how it's gonna go, but it'd be interesting being in the uh like so how did this come out? Was it he's he's asked someone for advice, was it? And they've leaked the email. Yeah, they've yeah, somebody screenshotted the email or whatever but it would is. Would you would you would you have sent that email like knowing who you are, the position you're in? This is where it gets a bit like you know, the conspiracy theorist in you sort of comes out a bit like, oh what's what's going on here? Yeah, well he can always come out and deny. Just yeah, that wasn't me. Hey, it wasn't me. Like, prove it was me. It wasn't <laughs> prove me. it was me. Like you, that's Photoshop. That's not my email address. Somebody's photoshopped my email address onto there. <laughs> <laughs> it's fake news. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, don't get me started on that idiot. Like he's he's, he's um... back in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry, man. Flu kicking my ass. Um. Yeah, I think what is, is it next year the American elections? Twenty no, twenty twenty four, isn't it? I don't know about this. Circus, yeah, it's, I guess it's uh, that's going to be hilarious to see the whole American electoral electoral system like implode because essentially the Republicans are going to be Donald Trump and whoever it is fighting against each other, and then the Democrats being equally as stupid, just being like, "What the fuck are you guys doing? We're trying to have a debate here." <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess we're the what the right have done, which is I guess pretty interesting slash terrifying, is they've managed to make it into a good versus evil argument. So mm. not a question of who's got the best policies, who is the best for the country, or what do you need? It's more like if you vote, uh, what do you call it? If you vote for the, is it Democrats or Democrats. the Liberal Democrats? Yeah, you're you basically saying you eat kids and you yeah. um, have a secret society. The, Ill- the Illuminati, the Illuminati. Yeah, the that's basically what you're saying. So they've kind the of Democrats. made, yeah, so they've kind of made like Donald Trump into the savior and all this, and that's where they, that's how they're trying to get people. And I guess it worked, and it is working. <laughs> um, that's a whole good versus evil thing. Yeah, so it's um, it's amazing what you can do to when people say about like. Uh, Russian propaganda or Chinese propaganda in terms of obviously you've got these dictators at the top that are basically controlling the narrative. Like I was having a discussion with somebody the other day about the war in Ukraine and how it can have like popular support in Russia, but living in a country where free speech is allowed, like it's hard to imagine where every single message you're being sent is being filtered through a government propaganda machine to make you think in a certain way. Mm. If you're only fed certain information, you're not given the whole story. You're just fed one side of it, but mm. it's coming from everywhere. You see it on the newspapers, on the telly, on the internet, because you can only see certain things on the internet. Eventually you're going to start believing it because that's the only information you have available to you. And not all Russian citizens are going to have like VPNs and stuff where they can go and get this information and it's it's scary to think how quickly a government or people in power can control the narrative to make the majority of people believe what they want them to believe um we're going down a rabbit hole here the whole the whole uh covid conspiracy is going to come out now isn't it uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, look at China, mate. It sounds like I guess we did lockdowns and stuff for a year or two, and it was fucking awful. Was they're still doing it, mate? Like all the time, and they're yeah. censoring. They're censoring anyone talking about it. I'm like, shit, that's now terrifying. Which is, I guess, what what a lot of people were alluding to in the first few lockdowns. Which I mean, I guess I was for I was for the first couple. I was like, yeah, you know, got to do what we're gonna do. And then as it's kind of went, I was like, oh, I don't know about this anymore. I'm starting to feel a bit icky. Whereas. Now, like, fuck this, they're still locking down. Like, a client of mine's had to go to a hotel room and isolate for 10 days because someone near them got COVID. I was like, fucking hell, that's still happening. Mm. I was like, yeesh, now this is getting... China wants a zero COVID policy. Well, he's got a zero COVID policy, whereas everybody else in the world has accepted that it, it's going to be here and it's going to yeah, stay. Yeah, well, someone's so. telling me their vaccine didn't work. Um, It just hasn't oh, worked. Oh, really? I think, yeah, I, I think it was on... um, What's his name? Yeah, uh, one of Israel's posts. He was saying apparently they, yeah, their um vaccine just hasn't worked the way that the West has. 
so it's still a fucking mental but it's like oh man like no like but my, my client the worst i'm like yeah maybe you want to come back home maybe it's not time <laughs> to be in china anymore yeah but, right uh, i'm gonna dash dude because i've got yeah i'm gonna go uh, use my new room. bar and i'll let you know what it feels like when you do some rose mate but um awesome. pleasure as always um good times and we will see you next week and if you get any we'll questions see you guys next week, week yeah man take take care no buddy i will see bye you for now. bye